Okay, so the first type of validity that we'll talk about today is construct validity. Um, and to show an example of this um, and where it can go wrong, let's pretend that you just ran um, this randomized controlled trial um, about this new program that's trying to increase commitment to school for students. Um, doesn't matter what kind of program it is, just some sort of program that, that's helping students. Um, and your outcome for this program is increased commitment to school. That's in your logic model, that's in um, your impact theory graph, that's the main thing you care about. And so at the end of your study, you find, to your surprise, that participants in the study score 200 points higher on the SAT and have a higher GPA on average. And so you report to your board of directors and you say, this program works, it increased commitment to school because look, test scores are higher and grades are higher. This is amazing. We should roll this out to everywhere. Um, so is that valid? Was this a successful program or was this not a successful program? Um, and the tricky part here is we don't know. Um, if we assume that, that commitment to school here is um, measured through through test scores or through GPA, then maybe this was a, a valid, successful study. Um, but if we're trying to say commitment to school is measured by test scores, um, that's kind of a big leap to make. Um, and it might not be accurate. It might not be the thing that we actually want to find. Um, so one way of, of talking about this, there's this, this apocryphal story um, that people always tell when they um, learn about statistics, and it's this idea of the streetlight effect. Um, so if you imagine um, late one night you're walking down the street and you see a drunk guy um, looking for his keys um, here in the light of the lamppost. So you ask him and you say, hey, do you need help finding your keys? And he's like, yeah, I don't know where they are. I lost them over here by the bushes, um, but I'm trying to find them. And he's spending all his time looking where the light is, even though over here in the bushes is where the key actually is. Um, but they're not actually searching there because they can't see. And so um, this person's spending all of their time looking at where they can see, not at where the actual thing is that they care about. And so this is the same idea behind um, this notion of construct validity. Measuring something like commitment to school or any of these more abstract outcomes that we've been, we've been talking about this semester so far, um, it's hard. That was the whole point of the uh, ladder of abstraction assignment that I had you do um, last week. And it was tricky. Lots of you um, in your feedback said like, I, this was really hard to do. I had to think about this a lot. And the reason why is because you're looking over here in these, these dark zones where there's no light. Um, and it's hard to look there, but that is where you'll actually find the keys. And so if you're trying to say this program increased commitment to school, look at the grades. That's not, that's like looking in the light here. You can, you can measure grades, you can measure test scores, great, but that's not actually reflecting what you want to find. So this idea of construct validity is really just um, this general question. Are you measuring what you actually want to measure? Um, so do test scores measure commitment to school? Or maybe test scores can measure teacher performance or principal skill. Um, we see this with the No Child Left Behind um, Act, where um, school test scores help determine pay raises for, for teachers. Um, they help determine whether or not um, schools get to stay open or get increased federal funding. Um, and it's all tied to test scores because that's something that we can measure. Um, the issue there, though, is that test scores don't necessarily measure um, commitment to school or student performance or anything, really. Um, test scores are really good at measuring how good students are at taking tests, and that's basically what test scores do. Um, they're also often a proxy for wealth. Um, richer families tend to have kids that do better on standardized tests because um, they can often pay for standardized test prep classes. Um, and so it's, it's really not measuring how good, how smart you are or intelligence or anything like that. It's really just a measure of how good you are at, at logic and deduction in standardized test um, circumstances. And so, it might not be the best measure. Um, so this, again, is why we spent so much time with that outcome measurement um, construction assignment um, that you all dreaded and hated doing, but it's, it's necessary. Um, it's the only way to make sure that you're actually searching in the area where the outcome is rather than just where the lights are and you can kind of scatter around in, in the light area. You're never gonna find the program effect you care about, but the light is there, you have data, cool. Um, 
But the point of this assignment here is to make sure that you have construct validity in your outcomes um, so that you can actually say this program had some sort of an effect on society as measured through this constructed outcome that we have. So that's why we care about construct validity. Um, without it, we're not going to measure the things that we want to measure. With it, we're hopefully um, going to find the key that's lost in the bushes.